welcome to Holy Trinity Church. A few things to say before we get into our service proper, uh, our service of Holy Communion, uh, its form of spiritual communion, I guess is what we've been calling it this morning. Uh, we'll come to that in a moment. But um, our preacher uh, this morning is uh, the new Archdeacon of Middlesex, a lovely chap called Richard Frank, used to be a vicar just down the road in St. Margaret. So he knows what it's like uh, to be a part of a church family and be, be a vicar. And um, he's going to be sharing some thoughts about uh, knowledge and what, uh, how we can grow in our knowledge of Christ. And um, we're going to kick the service off with the traditional hymn, uh, Be Thou My Vision. And then later in the service, uh, there's an, an amazing video that um, Sam Stocks has made for us with multi-instrumental kind of bits put together. Um, and uh, really grateful to Sam for doing that. So do, uh, do watch out for that. Uh, but both songs, uh, both Be Thou My Vision and 10,000 Reasons, are all about um, how it is that we can enlarge our vision uh, of who Christ is and grow in our knowledge of him. Also, um, to draw your attention to the Sunday School, um, they always uh, premiere half past nine. They're going on uh, till the 26th of July, but then they're stopping. But on the 26th of July, we're trying to get all our children and young people uh, in uh, a video. Uh, Vicky's found a brilliant song. You'll find the link uh, on, uh, on the MailChimp and, uh, and on the website. Um, but there's a, a, Vicky's found this great video full of energy and uh, be lovely just to get some uh, videos of your, your children bouncing around to it. Um, it's a great song all about how Jesus wants us to be his uh, sort of hands and feet in the world today and, uh, and see the world through his eyes, which is a great, uh, a great expression of love, which is what the Sunday School theme has been on all through July. So do encourage your young people to get, uh, get filming. And then lastly, we're in a bit of a crossroads uh, for the church because um, we are, uh, had a very good meeting with the PCC on Zoom uh, on Monday, and we, we just need to ask you your opinion. Um, so we're going to do a survey. Um, you'll find, uh, we'll do a MailChimp with it, with it on, uh, and um, we're just trying to find out the answer to two sort of big questions. What can we do to make our online worship uh, better? And what form, uh, what are the priorities for you about coming back into the building? Uh, currently, we could probably meet with about 30 people. Uh, we could do communion, but I'd have to wear a face mask while I'm distributing it. You'd all have to be spread around the building. We wouldn't be able to have Sunday school and we can't sing together. So it's trying to work out, well, what are, what's our priority? Um, how are we going to reach people? How are we going to stay together as a church family? So we really want to know what you think. Please, please uh, fill in that survey. Well, plenty from me. Let's come now in prayer, which is why we've come this morning. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let's uh, sing at the top of our lungs a uh, real prayer. Uh, this is an ancient Irish prayer from, about, I think it's about 600 AD. It's a really ancient prayer uh, where we are praying, asking God to enlarge our vision of him uh, and uh, grow our relationship with him. So be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Let's sing together. <laughs>
Hear the words of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. And so we pray together on our service sheets. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that's past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so I can say to all of us, Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, and strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer as we say together the collect for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. We say together. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry we all may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, Rachel is going to bring us our Bible reading for this morning. Rachel. Today's reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to chapter 2, verse 8. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, perhaps, as the saying goes, knowledge is power, or at least can be powerful. But what do we do when we simply don't know? 
I began as Archdeacon of Middlesex some 15 weeks ago, on the very day that we in the UK entered what became known as a lockdown. I'd already known that as I plunged into this archidiaconal world of faculties and finances, HR and appointments, that my knowledge would be not even an inch thick and certainly not a mile wide. Knowledge might be power and can be really useful as we serve others, but what do we do when we simply don't know? We were walking as we walked into lockdown, into a world that simply wouldn't bend to my knowledge gathering efforts. It didn't seem to matter how hard I worked, how much I read, how many Zoom briefings I attended or people that I spoke to. There was suddenly simply so much I didn't know and couldn't know because no one did. None of us knew what was going to unfold over the months that were to follow. And ever since then, we've been running, and I confess, I suspect, a little bit more recently, trudging wearily through a world so unfamiliar, so unknowable, that it's hard to believe it's the same one in which we celebrated Christmas just six months ago. So knowledge may give us power and some influence, but what do we do when we can't know? And what do we do when on top of a pandemic, we find that pretty much every important aspect of our shared life together is exposing even the knowledge we thought we had as being bankrupt. What do I do in the face of the climate crisis, when my lifestyle and my choices threaten the very fabric of our future on this planet and I simply don't know how to make a big enough difference? What do I do in the face of the crushing effects of racism? where our history of slavery and the toxic effects of empire still shape attitudes, relationships, structures, and where I simply don't know how to deal with the privileges I'm only just recognising I carry by the colour of my skin. What do I do when I have to say I don't know? Well, one thing that the scriptures don't allow us to say is that it's okay to give up on that knowledge, to take lack of knowledge as an excuse to give up on rational thought or powerful conversations, as if they're somehow beneath us as people of faith. Far from it. The sort of knowledge that comes from reading, from deep listening, from scientific inquiry, from logical, rational debate, is part of God's great gift to us as human beings. We are to commit ourselves to think deeply, to engage rationally with the biggest challenges of our age. But the scriptures do also show us that knowledge isn't only rational, but is fundamentally relational too. That we are creatures of heart, not only of head. That the power of knowledge comes perhaps most strongly in our knowledge of the other. To know and to be known personally. And most of all, to know the one who knows us from the inside out and who chooses, nevertheless, to love us just the same. The Apostle Paul, someone of erudition, deep learning, and even, we might say, philosophical genius, wrote of knowledge in his letter to the Corinthians. He wrote this, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. In other words, Paul knew that there is a knowledge which in the life of the Christian, is to shape, to underpin and to challenge all other knowledge. The knowledge of Christ and him crucified, a knowledge of heart as well as head. So as many of us begin to help lead our church communities, tiptoeing tentatively out of lockdown, not knowing exactly what we will do, nor how things will go, our knowledge of Christ keeps our hearts in the right place, set on the one whom I serve, not on my fear of reputation or status or even success. And as we try to respond to the growing effects and threat of climate crisis, knowing Christ helps set my personal desires and my appetites in their proper place. And yes, as we grapple with privilege and with the evil of racism, our knowledge of Christ and him crucified nails to the cross any sense that a human may be worth less or more than any other, so precious to the God who in Christ comes to meet us in love. 
these past 15 weeks may well have felt to many of us like 15 years. But as we walk together into this strange and unpredictable summer ahead, and as there's so much we simply don't know about how to live and how to act, may we determine, simply and most importantly with Paul, to know Christ and his crucifixion. And may we find in that knowledge of Christ the courage and grace to think, to work, to act and to pray, not for our power or influence, but to see the power of God in Christ at work by his spirit through us and in us and in a world in need to the glory of his name. Amen. Well, great to hear from Richard. Um, and now Rob is going to lead us in our prayers. Over to you, Rob. Well, the response this morning when I say, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you our church, which has changed in recent months, but has stayed together as a community of people seeking to get to know you better. And we look forward, Lord, to the day when we can open our doors properly and welcome in people who perhaps haven't been able to keep connected as well. We thank you for Tim, Nat, Cara, Anna, and everyone who's been working so hard to keep everything going, despite our challenges. And we thank you that we are still a community of faith together here in Twickenham. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we ask for your help in learning more about you. Often we come in weakness, not really knowing the right words and what to say, how to share our faith. But we hope that as we work together, we may be able to demonstrate that this is a community that wants to know more about you, that wants to learn together and grow together. And we pray for the work, particularly as we try to outreach to this community, which has been difficult in recent times, but we really look forward to the time when we can pick that up. We pray that people will come together and that you will strengthen all of our efforts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we think of our leaders, Lord, those in difficult positions of authority at this time. And we pray that you may give them wisdom, patience and strength to work out the right things to do or to make decisions, even though it's just so difficult. And we ask particularly for your help on all the medical profession. We thank you so much for everyone who's been involved in the effort to fight this virus not just directly in the medical profession, but all those who have kept things going. We thank you so much for them, Lord, and we pray that you may strengthen them and give them some rest over the summer too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for your help, not just here in Twickenham, but more broadly in the country and throughout the world. We think of those for whom the lockdown has been a time of tension and now they're perhaps getting more release that there may not be too many problems with tensions and, and crime and violence, Lord. But we just pray that there may be a sense of safety, peace and understanding amongst peoples. And we think of those areas of the world where it's much more difficult because of access to medical care or poor access to resources and we pray that as we go forward Lord people may be really mindful of the needs of others not just on the doorstep but perhaps in the wider world too. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and Lord we bring before you all those who are sick and suffering at this time for whatever reason, not just those with coronavirus, but those who perhaps aren't getting the care they would have done for other conditions. And we pray that as things start to ease up, they may now get what they need 
comfort those who suffer, be with those who care for them. We pray for those who have died, those who are grieving, those who remember loved ones at this time. Lord, be with them all, comfort them in their sorrows, and give them and us all the joy and the hope of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, as we go forward into another week, we thank you for all that people have done for us this week. We thank you for music, for the world we live in. And we look forward to exploring more about you, not just in our services, but in the weeks ahead. So, Lord, we just ask that you be with us all every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you very much, Rob. Now we come now to the peace, and uh, for, the pe for, for some people the peace is absolutely horrible, they hate it, other people love the peace. Uh, I guess it depends on our personality type, but the idea of it is that we, before we come to communion, we uh, show our unity as the body of Christ, that little bit of the body that's called Holy Trinity Twickenham, uh, we show our unity and we also show that we are going to deal with any problems that there are between us because uh, Paul, uh, in all his one another's in the New Testament, my favourite one another is where he says, bear with one another. He expects friction. He knows we're human beings. And so in the peace we can say, yeah, we're going to fix that. We're going to sort it. We might not be able to do it right now in the middle of the peace in the middle of church, but we're showing our intention to fix it before we come to communion. So that's what we normally do. I think probably in lockdown, it's simply a case that we are saying to one another, I miss you. I really miss being with you, uh, seeing you across the, the aisle in church, standing behind you in the communion queue, uh, having a coffee with you afterwards, hearing about your life and praying for you. We're missing one another. So maybe in this um, uh, little section, uh, we uh, wish each other uh, the peace and then just, uh, just tell, us, tell one another that uh, uh, peace be with you or I miss you, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, but take that opportunity now. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's exchange a sign of peace in one way or another. have a moment of quiet as we come uh, to communion. Let's uh, just have a moment of quiet. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. And when we turned away, you did not reject us, 
but you came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and we celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit on us, wherever we may be, that spiritually this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And so, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so I encourage you this morning to draw near with faith. Take a moment of quiet as spiritually do you receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you, eating and drinking in remembrance of that he died for you, and feeding on him right now in your hearts by that same faith and with thanksgiving. Well, we come now to our final hymn, and uh, as I said earlier in the service, this has been uh, wonderful to see so much creativity coming from all of you, certainly not from me, but <laughs> so much coming from all of you, and it has been brilliant. Uh, Sam just thought, wanted to have a go at this song, and he uh, got all the people together himself, he did all the technical stuff himself, uh, and he's done an amazing job. So let's, uh, wherever we are, Whatever our attitude, we might be lying on the lounge floor, we might be jumping up and down on a chair. Whatever we're doing, uh, let's sing uh, 10,000 reasons, just to really uh, talking about that hope that we have, that uh, our life is not just about this life, but it's rooted in eternity. So let's sing together 10,000 reasons. the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy It's a new day dawning, 
It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul So as we go out into the rest of the day, the rest of the week, let's resolve now, as uh, Rich has just been talking about, that we will want to know Christ and him crucified. Our crucified Lord, let's get to know him better this week. So we close with a final prayer. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>